Hey there, Tundra Nation, and welcome back to the channel. The end of the year is upon us, and with many new products being released this year, we decided to go over some of the biggest flops and mistakes that we can find with minimal amounts of research done by my writers. So sit back, get ready to make some chargebacks, and let's start the show. Wow, this is garbage. You actually like this? Starting off, we have the Diamondback Sidekick Bird's Head. We chose this thing first to get all the revolver fuds and 22 fanboys upset just so we can enjoy the rest of this list without them screaming in our ears about how we are wrong. Shut, shut, your, shut your mouth. I'm sorry, what did You're you just You're just coming say? off stupid. This economical revolver is chambered in 22 long rifle or 22 magnum, which begs the question, why? With plenty of options already on the market for 22 revolvers and 22 pistols in general, tell me what's the point of putting an ugly bird's head grip on a short barreled revolver? Are you really suggesting that this would make a decent carry gun or are you marketing this to kids? If you'd done the research, you know that kids these days have zero interest in old technology. Want to know how I know this? Ask any kid under the age of 12 to dial a rotary phone. I'd put a hundred bucks that nine out of 10 of them wouldn't know what to do and would spend way too long trying to push the numbers like they're at church bingo with their grandmas. With sights that look about as awful as my writer dressed in drag, this is sure to be a hit with all the other unwanted guns stuck in the back of the safe. Eventually, if you keep these buying habits up, you'll need to upgrade that safe. And if that's the case, you should really check out today's sponsor. It also goes to her dog food. Vault Pro, proudly manufacturing the finest American-made safes, vault doors, safe rooms, and storm shelters. When you buy from Vault Pro, your safety, security, and privacy is their only priority. Vault Pro has never and will never release your information to another party, so click the Vault Pro link down in the doobly-doo. And by PWS. PWS is now offering their advanced BDE suppressors in four caliber options, 7.62, 9mm, 22, and 5.56. These suppressors offer revolutionary sound, all while remaining lightweight and tough. Easy to clean, easy to install, and easy to maintain, these suppressors will make shooting even better than it was before. Moving on to a real caliber, we have the Lionheart Industries Vulcan 9. At first glance, this looks like a solid 9mm pistol. Nice slide serrations, optics ready, available in multiple colors, but it comes with a pretty hefty price tag that's north of $1,500 MSRP. With the popularity of hammer-fired pistols coming back, this seems like something you might want to check out since it was made in the USA. Wait, no, actually, it was just a rebranded, slight improved Korean Daewoo K5. The K5 is imported into the US in order to trick buyers into buying American when in fact they are actually lining the pockets of other countries. This is a great buy for all those Glock guys that claim they only use American made guns just because their Glock says made in Georgia on it. Does it really matter when the gun was designed and only produced in Austria for decades? That's the same as saying you'd only use an American tank in war than driving a T-72 into battle painted red, white, and blue. For the price of this pistol, you could get two CZ-PO1s and still have enough money left over for ammo and mags. This pistol is like highly edited TikToks of people lip-syncing to K-pop songs. What are you taking, stupid pills? Next up, we have something coming straight out of the unconstitutional state of Connecticut, the standard manufacturing jackal. This thing looks like the byproduct of an opioid-fueled one-night stand between a P90 and a Thompson. The only problem with that is, once it was born, it was only fed paint chips from Chinese toys. This is neither the Wonder Cartridge 5.7, nor is it the venerable 45 ACP. Yeah, no. This thing's chambered in 22 for reasons, I guess. Standard manufacturing seems to be shooting for the poster child of bad ideas that you can do with rimfire rounds. They also make the switch gun and the double-barreled, kinda double-triggered Thunderstruck revolver. 22 long rifle is not known to be a reliable cartridge in the first place, and this thing looks like it's trying to exploit that. This is the type of gun that Kimber owners buy, just so when you go to the range with them, their 1911s seem reliable by comparison to the jam factory I suspect this thing is. Coming in lukewarm is Bursa with the BAR-15 MGP. This take on the modern AR is complemented with all of the stuff that was popular for Magpul, 
12 years ago. It has a Magpul trigger guard, grip, and stock with a fairly standard M-Lock handguard. Oh, and let's not forget about that anodized aluminum receiver because that's a major thing that all other AR-15s are missing, apparently. Hey, Bursa, before releasing a rifle, how about you make one that can get through more than 15 minutes at a range day? Companies today try to innovate and make new things that they think people might want, yet they order A2 bird cages in bulk and act as if adding it to their rifle adds a selling point. Honestly, I'd rather the rifle come with a thread protector because it's getting replaced anyway. In all my years of shooting, allegedly, and watching others shoot, I've yet to see the A2 flash hider actually hide the flash or mitigate it at all. Any 16 inch 223 rifle with one of these things installed still produces a volleyball size flash and it does nothing to help the rifle stay on target. Honestly, though, this would be a good match at the pawn shop for that burst of thunder that's been pawned more times than Biden has fallen down on camera. Oh, and for all you fanboys of the shorter platforms out there, Bursa does offer a pistol version with a mission-first tactical pistol grip and an underperforming 7.5-inch barrel. This is just so you have options on how to spend your money on utter disappointment. Now, many people of the gun tube community and the shooting community in general are always talking about how companies don't innovate. They just copy somebody else's homework and add a few letters to the end of the model to make it different, but not Fight Light. This company is known for their innovation for the AR market. By making a new lower receiver with a more traditional stock, this company has gained popularity in many band states by making something that is semi-auto and doesn't have a pistol grip or the barrel whip of a Mini 14. But the Herring Model 2024 ALAR or Advanced Lever Action Rifle takes this whole innovation idea backwards about five steps. They've taken the modern sporting rifle that we all know and love, well, except Brandon Herrera, and knocked it back about 80 years before Eugene Stoner was even born. In an attempt to merge the Marlin Dark series with the AR, they produced a rifle that has all the appeal of a kitten falling down a set of stairs. Yes, it is funny, but nobody really wants to do it themselves, and for good reason. It's not innovation, it's the opposite of that in fact, and I'm not even sure what to call it. That's a dang it. Guys, I, I mean, how are you going to produce a lever gap that has no iron sights? I mean, you're marketing to FUDs and they're the most optics fearful crowd in the gun world. This is bound to take off like a Bob Dole presidency in 2028. Keeping in the spirit of dumping on manufacturers based in Brevard County, we have the kel R50, the rifle version of the P50, which is the pistol chambered in 5.7 that takes P90 mags inverted. This looks just as coke-fueled as we've all come to expect from the quintessential Florida Man Company. Making almost no changes to the pistol design other than adding a longer barrel and a folding stock that has all of the comfort levels of getting a prostate exam from Brock Lesnar. This isn't even the P90 at home. This is the P90 in a mental institution post lobotomy. Hey, speaking of lobotomies up next, we have more copied homework from the Smith & Wesson crew with the M&P FPC. Now, before we get into the gun itself, it was smart of them to name it the FPC, so it probably comes up in searches for the Firearms Policy Coalition. This amalgamation of the kel Sub 2K and the M&P Pistol Series has the gun folding in half at the chamber because nobody asked for that. With the increasingly common theme of not adding sights as standard, this is yet another rifle that requires you to purchase more products in order to use it effectively. But let's be honest, folks, anybody that actually buys one of these things most likely already has a drawer full of Walmart optics that stopped working on almost every power setting after their first range trip. Slap one of those bad boys on and you can double your disappointment on your next trip to the range. Happy holidays, folks.